This is Shit and Shit, the encouraging or one note podcast. Interviewing musicians, comedians, sports personalities, basically whoever has a story, and sharing it with you. Also featuring music from around the world, artists of all kinds of genres. This is Chip Chip, the encouraging one note podcast. What's always about encouragement and who doesn't need some encouragement? Kick back and relax for a fun time. Great music. Encouraging words for you today. This is Chit Chit, the Encouraging One Another Podcast. Our first song we're hearing today is by Sydney Irving. She's a singer songwriter from Syracuse, New York. This is her brand new song from Unfashioned Creatures. Find me. You expect me to walk through your door and look you in the eyes like you never cross my mind and it's hard but I'll try I didn't say I would To chit chat, the encouraging one on the podcast. So glad you're back for another fun, exciting, encouraging episode. I'm your host, Jody Shotfield. As always, got some great music lined up here today. Songs featuring from musicians by Sydney Irving, Elizabeth Mary, Zach Brooms, Lucky Mays, and my guest has a song as well. My guest today was born in Thomasville. Georgia. She knew at a very young age that she was meant to be a country singer. And a lot of times life happens. Jobs, careers, and sometimes slows us down. Put those dreams on hold. 
but she was a truck driver. 22 years, big rigs across the USA. After 22 years, not really doing much with music, she's back, sharing some great tunes, album after album, song after song. Excited to hear her story, who's encouraged her, who's inspired her. My guest today is Marie Norris, here on Chit and Chat, the encouraging Wanoa podcast. It's always about encouraging others. Hello there. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Not too bad. Welcome to Chit and Chat. Well, it's nice to be here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, before we dive into some fun conversations about kind of your career and your music and, and other good stuff, I get those some iceberg questions at my guests. It's kind of get the, the wheels on the bus or the semi rolling, if you will. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you were to write an autobiography, what would your name of your autobiography be? I guess state of confusion, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a pretty good one. I don't know. <laughs> uh, number two, you've had two plane tickets to go anywhere in the world, a uh, two-week paid vacation. Where are you going? Mm, not sure not sure on that okay there's so many beautiful places that i've seen so far so i'm not really sure i didn't lose you yeah i have traveled in my time yeah so um (laughs) so that's um something that i just don't think about much okay i've been just about everywhere but i would i would love to still go and visit places okay overseas anywhere like a country you want to go see or anything well, yeah, I mean, I've been overseas, but yeah, yeah, I'd love to go back. Um, <clears throat> Italy, you know, um, um, back to Germany, France, you know. I, I've been those places. I just haven't got to visit everywhere I wanted to go. Gotcha. You got so. a bucket list of places you want to go? Hmm. Not really. Okay. <laughs> I mean, some people do have bucket lists. I tend to try and live in the moment. All right. So, uh, before before the next question, I, I kind of know the answer, but I'm going to ask you anyway. You had the opportunity to sing on stage with three other musicians. I kind of know two of them. Just reading your bio. What three musicians are you, are you on stage singing with? Okay, and that's uh, retired, dead, or alive? <laughs> yes, ma'am. All the above. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> Um, Barbara Mandrell first, she would be my first pick, uh, because I just admire her and I adore her. Mm-hmm. She's my favorite person. And then Elvis Presley, of course, would be, uh, <laughs> number, the number two. Yep, yep. Um, because who wouldn't want to perform on stage with Elvis? <laughs> I mean, he was like the grandfather of music. And then, uh, third would probably be Reba McIntyre. Oh, okay. That's, there you go. That'd be a good look uh, group to go watch. <laughs> oh yeah, um, definitely. What three words best describe you? Um, I would say humble, okay. and uh, I live life by the golden rule. I don't know. I, I'm don't know quite what a what a word that would be. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I'm humble. And I try to be. And where do you live? Put your tour guide hat on for us uh, for a second for us. Um, Nashville. Okay. Is there a, a, I've never been to Nashville. I've been to Knoxville, Tennessee, the World's Fair when I was a kid many moons ago. Is there a hot spot to go get some good old fashioned barbecue that you love or a good place to go get a bite to eat? Well, I love Chewy's. Chewy's okay. is one of my favorite places in Nashville. Um, 
And then um, Hattie B's. That's my other favorite. Hattie B's. Hmm. Will they, will they serve there? That's natural hot chicken. It's chicken. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for my listeners out there who might not know who you are, I did a little brief bio before we, we get, get this going. Let's share a little bit about you, who, who you are. Well, I am a truck driving singer, songwriter. Um, I've been doing this for, well, semi-professionally for like the past five, five going on six years. Okay. Um, uh, I write or co-write all of my songs. Um, I'm involved in every aspect of my music creation because, well, it's that important to me and it means that much to me. It's my passion. Um, I get paid to see the country. I mean, because I travel the lower 48, not so much anymore, but I mean, because I'm kind of stuck on the East Coast now. I just do a East Coast mail delivery now but um i used to be all 48 on the lower end um so i have really been everywhere (laughs) (laughs) Uh, so uh i mean just a a short synopsis i'm not trying to take anything from anybody i don't want anyone else's success but my own Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh what i feel that i deserve I don't want anything that anybody else deserves. Um, I'm not jealous. I don't want to stand in anybody's way. I want to help them to reach their goals and to reach their success. Mm -hmm. Um, But I also don't want them to hinder mine. So if their success and reaching their success hinders mine, I may just move on. Um, (laughs) It's nothing personal. It's just the fact that I don't want to get caught stead, you know, and just not moving. Right. I yeah. don't want to get stagnant. You have ownership in your so, in what you do. You, you take a value in your songs and your songwriting and your time. Right. Exactly. And as as everyone should. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I get paid to see the the whole country, and I try and write at least a couple of songs a day, if I, if not more. Uh, Because I try and keep my mind, you know, snappy. I try to keep it quick, you know, quick on the draw, thinking fast. So, and being able to put things together on point, you know, like standing on my feet, you know. So I I saw some of your videos. I'm sure you already had your coffee. I don't don't go any free. You have coffee today, right? You've had your coffee, right? (laughs) Yeah, sure. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, I, I, and I nice. You saw my video, so that means that you studied me. Cool. <laughs> I, did a little, I did a little research. Yep, yep. Uh, where were you born and raised at? I was born in I was born in Thomasville, Georgia, at John D. Archibald Memorial Hospital. Uh, have to give them a shout out there because uh, that's where I was born. Um. And I was raised in Cairo, Georgia. I don't know if you know where that's at. Mm-hmm. Syrup country. Okay. Um, it's where I Daryl Singletary was from. I love some so, syrup. Lots of, I love Cairo syrup on everything. <laughs> <laughs> what was your town yeah. like growing up? Uh, eh. <laughs> you said what was my life like you're, or you're, growing you're, up or what? Your town. How, what was your town like? Was it was it rural or like farming? You know, a lot of pastures. Or no, uh, actually, a lot of people think that I am from a rural city, but I'm really not. Okay, okay. I'm actually from a city. I mean, it wasn't a huge city, but it was a medium city. Okay. You know, um, Cairo was pretty cool. You know, it wasn't as big as it is now. Whenever I lived there, because I haven't lived there in years. I mean, years and years and years. I I said whenever I got out of there that I would never go back, and I didn't. Mm. And it's nothing personal. It's just when you get stuck somewhere like that, it's hard to get out. Yeah. Especially when you want to be somebody and do something with your life more than just work at Walmart or Dairy Queen or something, you know? <laughs> so. Wiggly. 
<laughs> yeah, the Piggly Wiggly. We yeah, had one of yeah. those too. Uh, I was in Market, Arkansas. We had a Piggly Wiggly. We had a, a Kroger. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, the good old days. Mm-hmm. Uh, were you? Was your family musically inclined? And, uh, as when you were young, it, what really drew you into music? Well, my mother, um, and this is the one thing that she actually did give me. Uh, she was very, very, very widely like she had a um, eclectic music taste. Mm-hmm. Um, she liked everything, not just country. She liked rock and roll. She liked pop. She liked funk. She liked disco. She liked whatever sounded good and made sense, you know, because there's two different types of music. There's good and bad. And I learned that from Barbara Mandrell. So, uh, (laughs) you know, there's only two different types of music and that's good and bad. So um, my mom really is the one that introduced me to Barbara Mandrell too. So she introduced me to my favorite person Mm. and, and she introduced me to Elvis. She gave me that love that I had for Elvis too, even though he was already dead and gone by the time I was born, Mm -hmm. you know, um, I still grew a love for him because of her. But yeah, um, technically, um, none of my family was really musically inclined. Um, like being able to sing, my mom couldn't carry a tune in a tin bucket. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> my mom was so tone deaf, it wasn't funny. And my granny could sing. I do remember seeing her sing when I was little in church. And, you know, she had like a, like a, for a woman, this was very weird for her to have it, but she had like a tenor voice. Mm-hmm. And, I remember thinking, my granny sounds, you know, I, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to sing too. And of course I got the want to and the desire to, because I watched Barbara Mandrell's lady as a champ. That's the first thing I remember seeing whenever I was a kid mm. and it was on HBO. And I don't even know how I came upon <laughs> getting to see that. Um, I know my mom loved her and she watched her, but I don't even know how I got to see that, Mm -hmm. but I fell in love with Barbara. Like, seriously, I just fell in love with her when I saw her on TV. Mm. I didn't realize that she was really the size she was in the TV. You know, she was no bigger than that. (laughs) But to me in my little kid eyes, she was larger than life. She was like superwoman to me. Or Wonder Woman, whichever one is your favorite. Right. Um, she she was just she was a superhero to me. And hey. I adored her and admired her and looked up to her. And she is the reason why I started chasing after music. Oh wow. Because I realized that was what I wanted to do because I saw her do it. And I wanted to do exactly that. A lot of people listening, you know, it's depending on how old they are. Know exactly who Elvis Presley is, but had no idea who Bruno Jill right. is. You know, it, it, it's the, right. People have been around for years. And, and, and Elvis, he's another one I studied too. I studied him. I, I've watched every piece of video that's out there on him. And he was another reason I didn't want to date Elvis. I wanted to be Elvis. <laughs> that was what I wanted. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. I never even thought he was good looking or any, I mean, although, yeah, I have eyes and I can see he's a very handsome man and attractive, but I wanted to be him. I want the audience to respond to me as well as they did to him. That's a gift. Mm-hmm. And he's one of the only artists besides Barbara that I have ever seen that had that. Oh, wow. To where he could control the audience in the palm of his hand. If my memory serves me, serves me correctly, my Papa Odell, my dad's, my mom's dad, was a big Barbara and Drop fan. We watched her TV show quite often, her and her sisters. And uh, the, uh, great memories watching the Barbara and Drill show and Donnie Osmond show and Marie Osmond. Oh, my goodness. Back in the days of a really yeah. old. Yeah, I love Donnie and Marie, too. <laughs> 
But I'm eclectic. I watch everything. Anything that was musical and, and, and involved music, I was there when I was a kid. And I'm still that way today. Mm. Like, I will go and I will spend any free time I have studying my favorite artists. Because what worked for them can work for me if I adapt it correctly. And you did a special for her, too, a special tribute for her as well called Hard Act to Follow. You want to share about that a little bit? Yes, I did. I uh, I wrote that for her a few years ago. Uh, I got the idea that I didn't want to just send her a letter or send her a message, which I do write to her at her fan club or her old fan club address. And I do get responses here and there. Um but I wanted to write something that she could listen to mm-hmm. and that she could enjoy and that she could um, feel proud of, maybe, I guess is the word of it or, or the word to use. Uh, because I was certainly proud of what she did for me as I grew up. Uh, there's a there's a lot behind that story because. Uh, I, like everybody else, I have my problems and I had problems growing up, you know, Um, my parents, you know, weren't together. They divorced whenever I was a kid. So my mom was in and out of different relationships and life was not easy for me. Mm. And that's as far as I'll go into that tonight because that would take forever to <laughs> to tell that story but Part yeah two. um Bar- barbara helped me through a lot and you know uh i wrote several different versions there was other versions of that song and i even brought a co-writer in to help me with it to choose you know which version to use and also to help me with the putting the music to it because I, when I first started writing songs, I was kind of afraid of putting, trying to put music to songs myself, you know, cause I was afraid I'd copy someone's melody. Right. And that's a big no, no. Oh, so, yeah. uh, do you, um, do you recall how long it took before people were noticing you kind of hearing your songs and getting out there and singing uh, periodically? Um, you know, quite frankly, you know, a lot of people know who I am now, but a lot still don't. Mm-hmm. And um, but it, it it took like, I would say, two years for me to even get any attention okay. whenever I first started doing this um, more professionally and trying to get my music out there. Um, being a truck driver and a singer, it's not easy. Trust me, it's two full time <laughs> jobs. That is not easy. What got not you? Not one bit. Driving, you got big rigs. Yes. Mm-hmm. What got you involved in driving big rigs? I mean, is that that's just different. It's kind of like career. a family tradition. Okay. Oh, I guess oh. it's a family tradition. So, you know, my dad drove trucks. His dad before him, and so on and so forth. Oh, wow. I was fourth generation trucking brat. So. My uh, my grandfather. But I didn't always drive trucks, so. Uh, my grandfather drove for Esso, then Exxon for a number of years when I was a kid, hauling gas, lean all across the uh, lower states of Arkansas. And whenever he roll into town, he'd call my mom. We'd go down and, and visit with them. We'd sit in, in this big rig, smell gasoline. You know, back in those days, gas smelled really, really good. <laughs> So I'm yeah. For those on the, on so the you a gas huffer? <laughs> oh, many memories. That's like what I. That's what. That's what messed our generation up. <laughs> as we was doing stupid stuff. Because <laughs> seriously, I did some stupid stuff when I was a kid too. I, I can't count the times I did things that probably should have got me at least hurt, if not killed. <laughs> Oh, the good old days, the middle, the yard, yard, uh, dart, the lawn darts or metal, you know, riding back of pickup trucks, no seat belts. Oh, the good old days, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember being scared to death sometimes whenever my mom drove. It seemed like the back end touched the front end of the car. <laughs> she was going so fast around the curves. What's yeah. It like, 
<laughs> What's it like driving across the U.S.? So what kind of what? Yeah, but is that is that help you? You know, come across with great ideas for song inspirations and seeing cool scenery. Oh gosh, yes, awesome. Yes, wow. I mean definitely. I mean, we can uh, we see a sign, a billboard sign, and it can give you an idea for a perfect song, mm. or be going down a stretch of highway and you see a certain name that's on one of the signs, you know, like it's whatever street, you know, Mm -hmm. you can, you can, you can adapt a song from anything. I mean, seriously, you can, you can pretty much use just about anything to start creating a song around it. It's amazing how many ideas are right in front of your face (laughs) as you drive down the highway every day. I never that, realized that. What's that? Do you have a song that called The Road Takes a Toll? Are you sure about that song? A yes. Bit? Um, yeah. Um, the Road Takes a Toll is basically a song that uh, that was written about the trucking industry mm. and the way that I feel whenever I'm out here on the road. That song is me. A hundred percent me that's my life whenever you listen to that song that's exactly my feelings and that's the way that i feel Mm -hmm. and people can relate to that because i'm not the only truck driver and i guarantee you even more people other than truckers can relate to that Mm -hmm. because musicians are on the road singers are on the road the road takes a toll regardless of how you're out there Mm. So, and I, uh, I'm part of Total Mix Radio. I have a show on there, my podcast put in there, and I've heard your song "Perfume and Diesel" several times. I like that song. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was the first attempt at a trucking song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you know who actually told me I needed to write a trucking song because I was not going to even think about it. No, no, there was no aspect in my mind that was telling me I needed to bring my trucking career into the music with me. But my producer suggested it. He said that he thought it would be a good idea (laughs) if I did a trucking theme song. He said, because you see men truckers out here singing. He said, but you don't see a whole lot of women truckers that are out here writing their own music and recording and, 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 and doing a bunch of live shows that are truck driving singers. That's awesome. I'm playing and that got my attention. Too. So people will hear that song today. I'm playing that at the very end of their interview. So, yeah, I, I like that song. That's a cool, cool song. And kudos to the one who gave you encouragement to do that. That's awesome. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I'm sure that Pat Holt will appreciate it, too. I have to give him a shout out. That that was uh, my producer on my first album. I couldn't get in contact with him for the second album, so I used Ad- Adam Knight for the second one, the second project. Um, and I think he did just as well. I mean, he did he did good on, on there. I mean, I'm still partial to Pat. I'm not going to lie, but I have a new producer now that's working with me on my new stuff that I like even better than I liked Pat. So I didn't ever think that would happen, but um, I'm trying out my options and trying to get a feel for who works best for me Mm -hmm. and with me because I need to be pushed and I don't need to sound like crap. (laughs) <laughs> you know, on the other end, because the guy don't know how to produce worth of crap. You know what I'm saying? That's a song. So, right there. Don't sound like crap. That's a song. I can feel it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cause I've had some that turned out pretty, not, it didn't even sound right. <laughs> um, but the musicians, they've always been point on point. Because they are Nashville's A game, they're 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 A players, you know. Mm-hmm. They really are. I don't use bottom of the rung. We get the Nashville top guys into the studio to play behind me, so uh, I cannot complain with the uh, tracks that I have. I, and matter of fact, I have some really good tracks. What's the camaraderie like? If I if I had to, go ahead. 
I, I said if I had to put my music against mainstream, I, I'd put mine against mainstream any day, and it sounds just as good as mainstream does. Awesome. So, uh, what's the camaraderie like being out there in the truckers' world, meeting a lot of truckers, and you know, just hauling and just kind of you know, you see each other, you're hanging out, or, you know, on the way on the drive, you find a good diner somewhere. What's that like for you? Um. Up until a few years ago, like a couple of years ago now, um, I didn't think that the camaraderie was still there. Mm. You know, I didn't think that brotherhood and sisterhood out here of the Chuckers was still there. But I actually found that camaraderie in, in a group called that I met while going to this um truck. Well, it's a I don't even know what it's. Really, it, but it's 10 4 on DC, and it's a, a trucking event where we go and we park our trucks on the National Mall in Washington, DC. Okay. And all of these truckers band together, they come together, they're all a brother and sisterhood, and the comp come up camaraderie is still there and it's alive and well within this group of people and i've become very close with this group of people i actually have performed there uh the last couple of years you know for the other drivers oh. um yeah we've done some songs and stuff you know and just had some fun it, that's all it was for it was just for fun you know and having a grand old time, you know, amongst our, the like, you know, people that are just like us. Right. And, um, it's kind of sad that more people won't get involved with the cause because really, um, all we're asking for is DOT to kind of look at the way their strict laws and not all of them, just some of them really affect us. Hmm um in a negative way and i mean you put limitations on us and then you still expect us to be able to do our jobs 150 percent and we got lots of limitations mm, well and anybody that knows me knows that i don't like limitations i don't <laughs> like to feel boxed in <laughs> i like to have that uniqueness about me and to be able to do what i feel is necessary to do at the moment. Gotcha. You know, I, I don't know many, many truckers. I, I know the Jerry Reed character, uh, Snowman and Smokey and the Bandit. You know, my grandpa's, his, his, uh, his call sign was Cheyenne. My dad's call sign was Cracker Box. What's your CB handle? I don't have one. Oh. Unfortunately. Oh, I got to work on that. <laughs> Yeah, I don't use the CB. It's um, I took the CB out of the truck because I just don't I don't like the way they talk on it. Okay. As soon as a woman's voice comes onto the CB radio, the men lose their minds, <laughs> and they uh, I just don't um, I don't like entertaining that. I mean, I'm I'm a I'm a good sport, and I enjoy having a good time as much as anybody, but when it comes down to being disrespectful and dang near dang right rude, mm -hmm. then um, you've gone too far. Mm -hmm. And men just, and I ain't throwing all of y'all in there when I say that, but you know, I just, the CB never worked out for me. Gotcha. So I never developed the CB handle. Uh, so you're a member of the ISSA. You, you and I both are actually members of the International Senior Songwriter Association. And I saw you have been uh -huh. nominated for a number of awards. You've been nominated for USA Female Entertainer of the Year, Vocals of the Year, Rising Star of the Year, Album of the Year, Single of the Year, Songwriter of the Year, and Emerging Star for the 2024 ISA Awards show in Atlanta. Congratulations, by the way. What's it like being nominated for so many awards? Very humbling. <laughs> I mean, because uh, I had never, ever dreamed it possible that, you know, that I could be nominated for anything. Um, 
I mean, I didn't say that it was an impossibility. <laughs> it's just that it was like, um, I don't know. It just, it was like crazy whenever I found out out there and to get our music heard. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I was very humbled and very, very thankful and um, honored to be nominated this year. Yeah, I was, that was very much a huge honor for me. I was shell shot myself and I got nominated for a couple of uh, nominations as well. I'm like, excuse me? Thank you very much. <laughs> so cool mm -hmm. um, yeah it's wonderful it's awesome you're also a member of the cma the country music association can you share a little about that how'd you get the news of becoming a member of the cma well i you have to um request membership you have to fill out this that and the other uh send in you know music and all kinds of stuff uh I almost didn't even put in the application because there was a lot to do mm -hmm. <laughs> to get in. <laughs> but, uh, but I did, and I put in the application, and it took about four months, I think, after I put in the application, and they accepted me, and they sent me my thing, and I was super excited about that because, you know, that means that it's official. I am a member of the Country Music Association, and I'm a member officially of that community. Mm -hmm. That was that was so very, very, very. I I don't even know how to put it into words. It was just very. Um, again, it's oh, an honor to be a member of the CMA. It's like you know that was a dream of mine. And that's a that's a dream that came into being a reality. My biggest dream is meeting Barbara Mandrell and being able to actually have a conversation with her face to face and tell her, you know, everything. Anything and someday possible. maybe that'll happen. I hope <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm not sure, but I hope it will. What do you enjoy most about being a musician? The one-on-one -on -one connection with everybody in the audience. Mm. That that's the most that's the most humbling thing that you've ever felt. What's is looking into their eyes as you're singing a song and you see them lip syncing, even though you're really not that well known, they know your song. That's cool. What's it yeah. like the very first time you took stage? Is there is there a like a ritual of when you go on stage, you pray, you kind of breathe, uh, you know, drink some tea? Is right. There, yeah. <laughs> is there I actually I go to the restroom first. <laughs> I uh, just before I go on stage, I will go to the restroom because any artist knows this, any singer knows this. If you do not empty your bladder before you go on stage, you're going to pee yourself. <laughs> That is not a very good feeling. Uh, seriously, I mean, you don't want to trinkle while you're standing up there on stage. That's embarrassing. A little bit. And then uh, after that, come back out. I will go and then I pray and ask God to lead my steps and, and guide me to what to do and what to say mm -hmm. while I'm on stage. Uh, and I know some of your TikToks, your videos, you hashtag truckers for Christ. That is so cool. How how, how important is, is faith in, for you driving, not only driving, but singing and being an inspiration to a lot of people out there? It's very important for me to be an inspiration, uh, a positive one. Mm, I don't want to be a negative inspiration. I want to be positive for everybody because. I didn't have a whole lot of that whenever I was growing up. Mm. There was not a whole lot of positivity in my life. Um, Barbara Mandrell was the positivity that came into my life. Oh, wow. She was where I learned about God. She was where I learned about a lot of things. I had to grow up watching her on TV and kind of learn from her the things to do because I wasn't getting that from home. Um, and that's why she's so important and special in my life. But, you know, um, I want to be a positive influence. I want to be an inspiration. I want 
the, a person to think that they can come to me and they can talk to me. I'm approachable because I care. I really do. Mm-hmm. Even though I don't know you from Adam and I have never met you, I still care and I want to help you. That is just me in a nutshell. I am here to help and I want to I want to hear your story. I want to I want to listen to you talk because there's always someone here. Someone cares. You're not alone. Yep, yep. Um, what's it like when little kids meet, meet you after a show and then you ask for your autograph? How humbling is that? <laughs> well, I haven't had that often too much. I mean, I have had a few little kids that have done that, and it's always very heartwarming and almost makes you cry. <laughs> I mean, because I do St. Ju- you know, you see, I do St. Jude's and then I do um, Make a Wish Foundation. Okay. Uh, I love kids. That's awesome. I absolutely love kids. And I'm actually doing two of those shows. Uh, one is called the, uh, the Boonville um, First Ever Make a Wish Foundation show in Boonville, Arkansas oh, wow. on May the 4th. And I'll be doing that. I'll be the uh, ending entertainment on that day from three to five. And then I'm doing another one called the anything on wheels benefit for make a wish foundation. That's awesome. Um, and that's on May the 18th in Searcy, Arkansas. Oh yeah. I've been, I've been, the, I've been to Searcy before university of uh, see Hardy university is up there. I've been there a few times. So visit, mm-hmm. um, yeah, born and raised in Arkansas. So yeah, it's awesome. Here, hitting around my, some my old neck of the woods, uh, those towns and cities and communities. That's awesome. Uh, you got a website you can share for us so people can follow you and check out your music as well? Uh, sure, yeah. It's uh, marienorris-music.com. And then, of course, I'm on Facebook and Instagram and all of the TikTok and YouTube, all at Marie Norris Music. I, I love a quote I came across. One of your quotes, you says, you say, you can have a dream in life and go for it. Just don't uh, hurt anybody along the way. Work hard enough and you can achieve whatever you dream. That That's very awesome. Yep, that's a Barbara Mandrell quote from The Lady is a Champ. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, thank that's you. my that's favorite cool. quote. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got that on a shirt somewhere or a sticker? <laughs> I don't, but I'm probably gonna have it put on one uh because i really love that quote she she really um she touched my heart and my soul as a kid with that very saying i watched her on the lady as a champ and that's what made me know what i was going to do when i grew up i wanted to be a singer well you know miracles happen that's always been my dream and and you never know the where this podcast may reach and it God willing, and it may happen. She may hear this somehow, some way, and connect with you. I wish you the best, and that uh, just you the chance to meet with her or talk with her. I just so hope that happens for you someday. I appreciate that. I, I really do because that would be like my biggest dream and aspiration coming true. I mean, other than the music, of course, <laughs> my music is very, very important to me because. My heart and soul goes into it. Mm. I don't just do this because there's money in it. Because quite frankly, most of us independent artists don't make a whole lot of money. We spend more money creating our music than we make. <laughs> and and I absolutely love creating new music. I have a hunger for it. I have a hunger for being in front of an audience. It makes me feel like I'm doing something worthwhile when I'm there. Uh, I'm here anytime you want to get share a new song, you want to promote a song, let me know. I'd love to play your music on my podcast. And uh, I'm on Total Mix Radio. I have a, a radio show there. I play music by indie artists as well. So just love to stay in touch with you. And I wish you the best. Safe travels and Godspeed. Thank you so much. All right. And God bless you. Thank you for having me. God bless. Take care. Be safe. All right. Bye-bye. You too. Here is Marie Norris's song, Perfume and Diesel.
I just want to give a quick shout out to all the truckers out there. Thank you for all you do. Many hours you put on the road uh, delivering groceries and gas and the many supplies that we need from different distributors across the United States. And you're away from your family and friends for, for weeks, sometimes months. And uh, I'm just praying for your safe return home uh, to your spouses, your husbands, your wives, your kiddos, your grandkids. And just be safe out there and knowing we're so thankful for you all. And I hope to get other truckers on, kind of sharing their story a little bit, like I heard Marie's today and kind of her, her story. Uh, but we are so thankful for you guys and uh, great, great memories I have from my grandpa when he was a truck driver. Uh, so thank you for all you do. Be safe and God bless. Just want to share some encouraging words here today. When I was a kid, I hated going on road trips. I got car sick. Just, yeah, it was not fun. But the older I get, the more opportunity I want to go on a road trip. Let's pack up, grab a lunch, and just drive. I like waterfalls, my wife likes oceans, but it's awesome to get out and just drive. And it's for that day or so, get away from the business, the business of life, to see God's amazing creation all around us and the many different forms of beauty from the mountains, from lakes to rivers, from waterfalls to oceans and it's so amazing and so I want to challenge you to find that time and go do a road trip back in my days we had maps road maps you go by, open them up today we have the cool apps and all kinds of fancy stuff but I want to challenge you just find a few spots you want to go visit and just drive. See the amazing beauty around you, wherever you may live. You live in Washington, you can live in Florida. There's so many cool places around the world. You can just get on a road trip and drive. I have a friend in Germany. She goes on a train and travels to Paris and to um, Norway and many countries around there. It's so cool. And get kind of envious and jealous of that opportunity to just travel on a train and just go anywhere. Go and challenge you. Pack your bags. Pack a day lunch. Just drive. And see the many beauty the beauty and the sir uh, the scenery around you. Where you may live. Enjoy a good old fashioned road trip. Next song is by Zach Grooms. His song is called Come Get It Over With. Tuesday night, typical, lonely and miserable. You got a lot on your mind. What he did, what he said, rattle around. I'm right down the road If you need a way to unload Just come get it over with you It's my shoulder Empty those pretty blue eyes You know I adore you And I'm right here for you Any old time Yeah, I got one I can help with that Just 
song can't wait to get him on the podcast here in 2024 that's zach grooms come get it over with me come get it over with (laughs) throughout this episode you'll be hearing small promotions for locally owned businesses that are my sponsors of this podcast i am thankful for each and every one of them enjoy Are you craving some authentic, fresh Mexican food? I got two places for you. Are you ready? You got a pen and paper? One, Dakiza Street. It's a mobile food truck located in Silverdale, Washington at 9571 Silverdale Way. They have some of the best breakfast burritos I've ever eaten. My favorite is the barbecued pulled pork burrito. They have other Mexican items as well but burritos breakfast burritos are there are amazing you can reach them at 360-914-9152 that's Takiza Street also at the Kitsap Mall in Silverdale, Washington there's Takiza there they have over five kinds of tacos burritos chimichangas and my favorite there grilled jalapenos Delicious. I know, I'm getting you hungry, right? Either Takiza Street or Takiza, and their number at the mall is 360 698 4335. Roberto and his staff are amazing. They're friendly, and their food is delicious. Come on by, check them out. That's Takiza Street at 9571 Silverdale Way in Silverdale, or Takiza. At the kids at Mall in Silverdale. 360 698 4335. I'm telling you, they got some of the best Mexican food in Kitsap County. It's locally owned and operated and very, very good. See you there. Craving donuts? Craving fresh made daily donuts? Lone Star Donuts. They have over 50 flavors. Sprinkles, no sprinkles. Field, not field. Chocolate, glazed, maple donuts with real bacon. Snow rolls. They are so good. So light and so fluffy. These are not your normal donuts. These are Texas style donuts. 
Hey, you know, I've been to Texas. Nothing small in Texas. Go see my friends at Lone Star Donuts. Now with two locations. One in Silverdale, Washington at 1087 Maury Place. That phone number is 360-204-5021 in Silverdale. Or Port Orchard at 2649 Mile Hill Drive. Their number there is 360-443-2600. You can find them on Facebook as well. Lone Star Donuts. Life is happier with donuts. Donuts from Lone Star Donuts. Our next song is by Lucky Mays. I found love. Here on Chit Chat, the encouraging one of the podcast. It was in your smile and the way you looked at me when I realized I'd never be the same. It was in the rain we broke down on 65. Hitched a ride from Tommy's dad to Cherry Lane And before I had no clue where I was going Flying blind wide open now Then I learned If something just ain't working It'll always leave you searching now I found love When I found you I had nothing in my life to compare it to I found love When I found you And I know everything before was not enough Till I found It was in this town You spent every single summer Fixing that rundown Silverado Building dreams On Friday nights We would run down to the river Southern stars Brighter than we ever seen I found love When I found you I had nothing in my life to compare it to I found love When I found you I know everything before was not enough Till I found love had changed the meaning Of the lies I kept believing I convinced myself I'd never Till I found love I found love And I found you I had nothing in my life I found love when I found you. I know everything before was not enough till I found love. transported back in time to say the 1950s as soon as you arrive at the big apple diner you'll be transported back in time their decor is amazing their menu is amazing too with breakfast lunch and dinner items try something different each time you go 
I tried the Penny Pincher Combo, which is a combination of quarter pounder with cheese, french fries, and a milkshake and a drink for $9.99. Where can you find a meal for $9.99? And they have over 30 flavors of milkshakes. You can literally have a milkshake a day and never get enough of the milkshakes, pies, and sundaes at the Big Apple Diner. Dine in or take out, so you might check them out. They're located at 6720 Kitsap Way in Bremerton. And their hours are 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And they're closed on Mondays. Swing by and check them out. The Big Apple Diner. The website is thebigappledinner.com. And you can call and place your order a day at 360-373-8342. Eat well. Eat local. Eat at the Big Apple Diner in Bremerton. Nineteenth Hole and Bar and Grill at twenty one seventy one Irvin's Point Road in Bremerton. Are you looking for a place to wind down for some nice cold beverages, some amazing food, and amazing customer service as well? Come on down to Nineteenth Hole Bar and Grill. It's a great atmosphere where you can hang out with family and friends and maybe co-workers as well. Come on down. Did you know it's one of the oldest bars in Kids of County dating back to nineteen thirty nine and the menu is to die for. Every week, every day, something special. Like Sundays and Mondays, Steak Night, Tuesdays, Taco Tuesday, Wednesday, Wing Night, and Fridays are always Fish and Chips Night. With the making halibut and cod. I also got burgers, sandwiches, and salads, and much, much more. And you've got a banquet room for bigger gatherings of friends and families for like birthday parties and, and whatever shindig you got. Did you know they are rated number one bar and grill in the best of Kitsap County in 2022 and 2023? They are locally owned and operated. Maybe if you're too busy to stop in, place your order today. Call 360-813-3501 or go to the website at 19thholebarngrill.com today. Their hours are 11 to 11 Monday through Friday and 8 to 11 Saturday and Sunday. This is 19th Hole Bar and Grill in Bremerton. Eat local. Eat well. Our next song is by Elizabeth Mary, called Share Your Shine. After becoming a mom in 2021, the phrase Share Your Shine inspired her to write a book with her baby boy in mind. And after completing the song, she left compelled to turn those lyrics into a children's song. She sold a bunch of copies, and, and the book's a perfect way to wind down a day remembering that no matter where life takes you, even through the ups and downs, you always remember to share your shine. Kindness will always win. You can purchase a book on their website at elizabethmarymusic.com. This is her song, her song called Share Your Shine.
thank you so much for joining me today on the Chit and Chat Encouraging One of the Podcast. My guest was Marie Norris. It was a, such a fun time talking with her, hearing her story, and uh, I'm hoping that Barb Mandrell hears this episode and is able to connect with Marie Norris because uh, she shared how much she helped her uh, throughout her you know, life and uh, how much an inspiration Barb Mandrell is to her. And so I hope somebody's out there can pass it on to her and maybe they can connect a phone call or in person. I would, I would just uh, be tickle pink if that was happening to her, Marie, and, and she would meet, meet her idol and, and just someone who really inspired her uh, throughout her life. So uh, thanks so much. Please subscribe and follow. Thank you, the musicians. Let me share your music as well. Please uh, continue to follow this podcast and share it with family and friends as we try to encourage one another and just have a good time together. Uh, and so when you're driving, you're stuck in traffic, it's a great podcast to listen to and you're running around doing errands. So thanks so much and see you next week. This is Shit and Chat, the encouraging one of the podcast. It's always about encouraging others.